addicts. And the unique thing about these is this offset dog leg that they have right here. This is going to cause a little bit of trouble sometimes. Um, so anyway, this is a different kind of tuner than the Rotomatics. The procedure is about the same, but it's got a few little tricks to it. I've actually kind of moved along on this, and I was ready to install, and I thought, you know, this is worth making a video for. So I threw one of them back on here just so we can see what they look like. And so here's what they look like. They've got a screw in the back. They've got a screw in the back right here. You take the screw out, flip it over, and where'd my wrench go? Here it is. A deep 10 millimeter socket is gonna be your friend on this thing. Fits on there really nicely like that. You wanna keep that from moving because it's not screwed down. You can turn it by hand. You can get yourself one of these things, which is really handy. Although, this is so big that you can you can do it. I use my screwdriver for that. It just gets the job done faster. Take those off. Drop those out. If these bushings get stuck on the peg head, and they will a lot of times. I've already polished this head, peg head up. So, that's what I use. McGuire's number two. Fine cut cleaner. I use a foam drill pad. Hook it up to that drill down there. Polish the head stocker. On this guitar, um, oh yeah, before I do that, after I've gone from the 400 to 600 grit, I use a finer grade, um, 1200, 800, something like that. Just something to smooth out your other scratches. This is going to do a good job polishing that. On this particular martin it's a 90s it's got the raised foil logo be super super careful and by careful i mean don't even get near the thing uh when you're doing the buffing pad focus your buffing down here and just barely brush over that i've never broken on a, one off i don't want to break one off so when i say careful <laughs> what i mean is don't even get near it because if you rip it off uh, you know it doesn't matter you you know by People say, careful, you know, what am I going to do? Wear a white lab coat, little rubber gloves, and come in here. You know, when it goes, it goes. And it doesn't matter what kind of good intentions you had. That's the way it is. Okay, so this tuner's off. All the tuners are off. The peg heads are cleaned up. On the back side, I'll plug the holes uh, with toothpicks. I just took round toothpicks and dipped them in glue tap them in there with the hammer, and then I stain them. You can use a magic marker if you want. Get yourself a brown Sharpie. Dab it on there. Touch it. They're not going to show uh, too bad. Let's get a Waverly Tuner out here, and I'll show you real quick. I'm trying to make this a short video and not too much, talk too much. A little congested. That's what it's going to look like, and it might. You can see it creeping out from behind there if I turn that. But you're going to adjust your Waverly to where it's not going to show very much at all. But you're just doing that because that's the way it ought to be done. Color them up a little bit, hide them. Okay? Now, here we go. This is the main difference between Rotomatics and these tuners. And that is, these have a stepped hole out here. So your stock Waverly bushing is not going to fit. You're going to have to actually open that hole up. Whereas with the Rotomatics, you've got to um, use your conversion bushing where you've got to shrink the hole. So this is the opposite of that. So what I use is my peg head reamer. Uh, peg head. Uh, bridge pin reamer. It's a bridge pin hole reamer. And I use this. Uh, it happens to be, as soon as it crosses this mark right here, happens to be the perfect size for these things. So let's make sure the GoPro is on this, and it should be. Go ahead and bring it down right there. Make sure you can see this. Okay. Now I know that thing's hitting this. Trouble with the GoPro, you know, I don't have a um, screen on the front of it, so I don't know exactly what's going on here. But anyway. Okay, we got the GoPro on the head, peg head. This thing, the diameter of that is going to be exactly the same as this. I've measured it many times. You could use a drill bit, but 
that scares me to death because if you rip this <laughs> you're in trouble i know these are expensive i have used them so many times look at the i mean it's worn you know this is one of those things that's going to go in the country music hall of fame when i die brian's bridge pin remember you just turn that very 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 slowly <laughs> carefully <laughs> the reason i like this one so well is it's what they call a half fluted so this edge is smooth and this edge is fluted so when you turn it it keeps the hole round there's no chattering so you're just going to turn this and i like to test it even though i know that's the stopping point there we go, see? I want to stop before I get there. This bushing is just starting to sit in there. Like that. It sits in there by hand. Of course, this is tapered, you know? So, the opening is a little bit larger than it is down in there. I'm going to turn that around a little bit and find out how good it fits. Use my thumb. It's not quite good enough yet. Not quite good enough. We can keep going safely. Okay, that's what that looks like. Well, I'm pretty sure you can see that now. It's just right there on that rim. I'm going to stop. A little dust off of there. Check the fit again. And that's pretty good. It's going in about halfway. And what we're going to do now is we're going to tap it in there. Now, I'm very comfortable with tapping with the hammer if you're not comfortable with tapping then rig up a clamp or something like that uh, i have done this so many millions and thousands of times i have pretty good control over the hammer and i don't have a problem with tapping you could also put um, a block of wood over it if you wanted to nothing wrong with that a little stick of wood you could tap on that it just gives you a little bit more buffer so you don't slip and hit the peg head you know that's all it is the headstock is supported on this sandbag fluff it up a little bit more that peg head right there is supported directly on that and when i go to do this one i'm going to move the peg head down here and etc okay so that's supported i'm going to use my hammer i'll go ahead and use this block of wood decide how you want these flats to line up Generally, I line up the flats all together like that. Some people think that the flat, as this bushing wants to torque a little bit, keeps the corners here from digging into the headstock. I don't know. Decide how you like them. Some people like them random. And it's going to go pretty stiff, and then it'll pop through as it goes through the, uh, the step here. Right there, see? Right on that last pair, it went, whoo, and it shot through. And there you go. There is a bushing installed. Let's do the other one. And then I'll show you one more time how I set those up. So we're going to ream it again. Check the fit. Pretty good. Now the tightness is, is happening down in here. Because again, this is tapered. So um, it's tighter down, in, down inside here. Right in here than it is up on top. And that's fine. And I'm comfortable tapping because I know that any stress. Because I'm tapping any tight wood is going to be down inside that peg head. And not out here on the edge. So in other words, if I, if it was tight on the edge here, right up here, there's a good chance you could crack that overlay um, after you put three or four of them in. You know, after you put three in. I've seen that happen. But because the opening is actually 
put it just a little loose that tightness is down in the hole a little bit and it'll be all right it's not going to crack anything and because it goes that step and it goes through the step boom then you're really not pushing much on this so the other thing about using the hammer is you can come back here like if you look at this real carefully here it's not quite uh straight so you know Using the hammer, I can come back here and tap a little bit more on one section, make it go in straight, which is harder to do with when you're using a press. Okay. All right, we're going to mount the tuners now. The way that I do this is get two tuners, put them up here, take a fairly straight piece of wood, put the wood on these shoulders right here so hold it like that don't push down like this you don't want to be pushing the tuners see they got a little bit of motion in them and you don't want to be pushing them down in here you'll cause binding the key to getting the tuners to work good is to find their happy place so put them in here wiggle them back and forth and then press this way to the headstock so that you're holding this stiff Take a scratch all like this and bring it right to the center of the hole. This is, you know, bring it right to the center. You slide it forward and then you push down. So you bring it to the hole, slide it forward, and you put it right in the center of that thing. And you can check it visually. Okay, take the tuners off. Okay, match up your drill bit and your tuner screw. My finger's in the way. Like that. Hold the shaft up there, and you want it. You want the threads to stick out. You don't have to drill it all the way down if you don't want to, you know. So your your screw is gonna bite. Now what I do, <clears throat> you need a depth stop on this thing. What I do is just get me a piece of tape, hold the screw up here like this. And I'm going to back it up just a little bit because I don't want to drill all the way down. So I'm going to put that depth stop about right there. That. I don't trust tape as much as I do um, actually marking the drill bit. You can try to use a sharpie for and actually mark the drill bit. But this is a dark drill, dark bit. My mark's not going to show up. <clears throat> what I'm getting at, this tape can slide, and you don't want that to happen. So, if you mark it here, if it's a light one, let me show you this one. <clears throat> see that one? That's a gold colored drill bit, and you can see my mark on it right here. And that's not going to move, and as it spins, it's very obvious. I prefer that a lot more than using the tape. But the tape will work for now as long as you kind of keep an eye on it. So let's check it again with the drill bit. And I'm not going to be drilling the point of that screw is still going to go into the wood. All right, here's my mark right there. Let's get the hammer out of the way. We don't need it anymore right now. Take it. You brace it with your thumb and go. Even though I have a depth stop on there, I still stop shy of that. And that keeps it from getting bumped and sliding forward. Okay? I'm going to brace it with my thumb. And I'm going to stop just shy of it. Then what I do is put one of the tuners on. Um, these are slot heads. And they're a funny size, too. You got to make sure that your, your bit really fits them good. This one does. Because it's the one I use for this. This is a 3 sixteenths. You want to make sure it fits on that screw head really well. Start it. I started with my fingers. And again, you know, if you're not comfortable using the power tools, use your hand to us, but I'm alright with this because I've done it so many times. And again, what I do is going to brace it with my finger right here. I 
Then I don't get it tight yet. Just get it snuggish. Put the other one in. Embrace it with my finger. Snuggish. Snuggish. Now, you see, you still have a little bit of movement in the tuner. And so this is where you're gonna make sure it turns, get it straight, take this one, bring it over here. And then what I do, get these shoulders. I'm gonna bring the camera up here to show you what I'm talking about. Here you go. Piece of wood is on those two shoulders getting the tuner straight across. So I'm gonna get in there. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna actually hold the tuner with my thumb, like that. Come crossways with the awl. Pop it in there. Chuck that one. Chuck that one. That one looks good. You could tighten the screws up too, but I like to wait till I'm done to do that. Okay, got my mark. And I could just do all this one right in with the tuner in place. There we go. So I have it braced because I can feel it slipping like that. Now what you want to do here to really do a really good installation is balance out the amount of metal on each side of the screw and it will move just a little bit. So I like to get that really balanced out right there so that it looks good. See that one scoots over just a little bit. And I'm going to balance that out on the screw. And this is where I'm going to use the mechanical part of the screwdriver to get that last bit of tightening down. Done. Okay. I just like to have them balanced out and looking really good. And these are look. These are looking nice. There we go. Okay, and then you repeat for the other ones. And here's what we got. These old screw holes are hidden. You can, I mean, you can just barely see them. Yeah, this one's completely hidden. Pretty good. And then on the front, this is what we look like. Smooth, and you can see the, I did a pretty good job of sanding out the raccoon eyes here. Uh, that color is gonna fade uh, pretty quick. Pretty quick. But the peg head itself is smooth. The lacquer dents are not deep on this one. This is going to look pretty good. So that's Waverly's. Where it used to have whatever these are. Shallows, pings. I don't know what these are, you know. Somebody's going to tell me and then I'll fix the title. It doesn't matter. Like I said, I don't pay any attention to the tuners. People ask me, um, does this tuner or that tuner need this or that and this and that? And I honestly don't even, I don't even remember them. I, I, um, I pick up the guitar, and I do what it needs to be done to it. These are probably the most complicated. I don't know they're the most complicated. The Grovers, you got to go. You got to make the bigger holes smaller. But the rear screw holes usually match up. So the advantage on these is you don't need um, conversion bushings. You can use the reamer, but you better have a reamer if you're going to do this right. Um, so, you know. 
they're all about the same. And I just don't pay any attention to which ones are which and the names of all of them and all that. I just pull the tuners out and I look at them and I go, okay, this is the tuner that needs this and this is the tuner that needs that. And on these, I like these because you get to ream the hole out and so you can use the stock Waverly bushings, which are good bushings, they're deep. And it also means that I don't collect. Man, I had a box full of these things. <laughs> Still do, I think. I forgot if I gave them away or not, but I had a box full of these kind of bushings because I used so many conversion bushings. So it's nice to be able to use the bushings that come with the tuners. And there we go. And this, uh, the owner of this guitar went with the oval bushing or the oval button waverlies, which I like a lot. I think they're really clean and um, light. And I like those, you know. All right, that's how we do it. Any questions, anything in the comments, put them in the comments. You can tell me what I'm doing wrong and what a bad mechanic I am and blah, 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 blah. But <laughs> I've done, oh man, 